The Nigerian Senate has pledged to accommodate the views of stakeholders in order to read the nation's statutory institution of incident of sexual harassment. President of the Senate, Hamad Lawal, gave this commitment during a one-day public hearing on the sexual harassment of students in tertiary educational institution, Prohibition Bill 2019, held in Abuja. The bill, which was sponsored by Deputy Senate President Ovie Omar Gege, seek to impose stiffer penalty on perpetrators of sexual assault and harassment. The bill proposed up to 14 years jail time, with minimum of five years without an option of fine for any educators who commit sexual offenses in tertiary institutions. The hearing was presided over by the Chairman Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, Senator Michael Opeyemi Bamdele. In his welcome address, Senator Bamdele explained that the bill seeks to criminalize the act of neglect or failure by administrative heads of sexual institutions to address complaints of sexual harassment within a specified period. In his opening remark, President of the Senate, represented by Senate Majority Leader Senator Yahya Abdullahi, regarded sexual harassment of students in tertiary institutions as unacceptable. Our interest is to build a society where all will be free of intimidation and harassment, and where choices will be freely and reasonably made. We need, therefore, to be critical and firm on how best to proceed with this bill. My charge to you, ladies and gentlemen, is to be forthright in your suggestions and contributions to enable us to build a system that is respectable, that protects people's rights, and places our country in the right place in the Committee of Nations. The public hearing was well represented by members of the general public, including stakeholders from ministries, departments, and agencies, academic staff union of university, National Association of Nigerian Students, and civil society organizations. If we have a law that addresses issues related to this, this problem of sexual harassment, why are we wasting time talking about another law? Are we also going to formulate a separate law to address corruption in universities? Are we going to formulate, formulate other laws to address sexual harassment in the police, in the National Assembly? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in other places, other clients, how do they handle this kind of problem? So three weeks back, a case of sexual harassment was reported in Abbott. Another was reported in Cambridge. They didn't come up with new laws. With due respect to my sister Monica, I respect her sensibilities and all other ladies that could have fallen victim. We didn't need to wait for this law for Professor Kidele to be jailed, did we? that we find deficient. What does it cost us to review the law?
law. We are saying that laws should not be made hard on. As you open that uh, this bill is targeted at them, but we are here to say that the bill does not target us. What the bill does is that every legislation ordinarily has a target. We have different legislations that have targets. For instance, we have the section 37 of the criminal code, which creates offenses for disclosure of official secrets, which can only be committed by a person employed in the public service. This does not target us. It targets official those who are covered by section by that provision. We have the criminal code also creates the offenses of judicial corruption, which can only be committed by judicial officers. So we can see that legislation must have a targeted audience. So also the uh, anti anti sexual harassment bill, which is targeted at the members of ASU being one of them, but not discriminatory because every bill or piece of legislation must have a target. I would like to go straight to um, the comment made by a presenter here. I would like to disagree when he said that um, students seduce lecturers into um, sexual harassment. Now, if you look at the power dynamics of the relationship between students and lecturers, it is obvious that there is only one strong person. The other is the weak um, person in the relationship. And there is no way a student would pressure a lecturer into going to sexual harassment. We cannot agree with that. Um, also, 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 the educators, not necessarily um, lecturers in the university, not academic um, staff of universities, polytechnics, college of education, they involve in this minutes. Uh, but these same people, when they go outside this country, uh, where people dress a little bit more exposed than our students on campuses, they don't engage in these things. But they always make these arguments that our students pressure them into, into, uh, into committing these predatory behaviors. We disagree strongly with that. Uh, we, we also uh, want to uh, agree with um, the professor from law school who talked about secondary and primary schools. It is not only in the tertiary institutions. In primary schools, we have cases where vulnerable children, pupils, have been harassed sexually. And we think that this um, 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 bill should cover these people. To increase the offense and should be removed. The word or a felony should be removed as reference to, to offense is sufficient. Another observation in clause 4 is that it, 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 the, the provision itself is drafted in a way that it, it, is, it, it seems biased in favor of the student and against the educator. The offense created in clause 4 covers only instances where the educator commits an, offer, an act of sexual harassment against the student. It does not create offenses for, off um, offenses for instances where the student is the one sexually harassing the educator. So today we're actually talking about sexual harassment. Um, I've been through it, so I know what it means to go through sexual harassment. From the bill, they only emphasize more on um, punishment, punishment, punishment. They didn't really talk about um, most of the preventive measures, like students going into offices to meet lecturers. Most times we don't do the going in. We have um, governors, like school governors that do the going in. And most of these governors tend to have interactions with the lecturers. And they tend to have um, like lecturers saying, oh, you can bring a babe for me now. Can't you do that? And they do that in school. So most of the students, like we the ones that really don't know what's going on. And people tend to tell me that, oh, she dressed very vulgar. That was why the lecturer harassed her. It's not in that case all the time. And it's not always the case that the student is not uh, really so intelligent. That's why she's been failed. You saying that we students might maliciously get this, the lecturer involved, that is not possible. It's definitely not possible because you always go through a panel 
and the panel will find out if truly the student actually maliciously um, incriminated the lecturer. But hope you know most lecturers are in conflict with each other. Like I did not get my certificate, I was denied my certificate because Professor Akindele went to jail. So they felt, oh, she could incriminate Akindele, then she's not going to get a certificate. We kept going in and out about the certificate, and they kept saying, oh, she failed, she failed. She can either come back and receive all the courses again, which is not possible. Recall it assembly of the Senate under the leadership of Pukola Saraki had passed the bill titled Sexual Harassment in Tertiary Education Institution, Prohibition Bill. The bill was, however, rejected by the House of Representatives when it was sent for concurrence. Then Femi Bajabia Miller, who is now the Speaker of the House of Representatives, has argued that the bill did not take care of other spheres of the society, like workplace, religion, institution, among others, an argument which was adopted by many members of the House. The reintroduction of the bill comes after the BBC documentary exposed two lecturers of the University of Lagos and the lecturer of the University of Ghana of sexual harassment.